How's it going everyone? This is MedCat here and today we're going to be covering DNA replication and also going a brief double AMC derived practice problem. First things first, in DNA replication we always start at what we call the origin of replication. As the name suggests, this is where we are going to start replication. And one thing to note is that there's a major difference in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Us being humans, being eukaryotes, we have multiple origins of replication along many different chromosomes. Okay, so lots and lots of origins of replication. And that makes sense because we have a lot larger of a genome than, for example, a bacterium, which is a prokaryote, has a much smaller genome, which consists of one singular chromosome. So they only need one origin of replication in order to actually replicate their DNA. Second thing we're going to take a look at are these two general regions, which are called replication forks. So I'll just label one of them here. A replication fork is quite simply going to be this kind of Y-shaped area where we're dealing with the replication of our DNA here. And how we actually get this started is with an enzyme that will unwind the DNA called helicase. So the helicase is unwinding the DNA in these directions. Okay, so we're going left and right there. Okay, so helicase. Knowing the name of that will definitely be important. Okay. So helicase is what is actually separating those there. Now the protein that actually keeps these strands separated is a little different. We call these single strand binding proteins or SSBs for short single strand binding proteins and I'll just fill them in on each of our strands here and these are what prevent the DNA strands from reannealing or reattaching themselves together because when we take a look at helicase, what's to prevent those hydrogen bonds from reforming that helicase is just broken, except of those SSBs. Now if we move on, we also have another problem to deal with. Upstream of these helicases is what we're gonna get, um, a problem that we're gonna get is termed supercoiling. Where we get some tension upstream of these helicases. And that supercoiling will be fixed by a class of enzymes that we call topoisomerases. That will actually help snip that DNA, relieve the tension, and then reseal that DNA so that supercoiling doesn't end up with any damage in our DNA upstream of those helicases. Next thing we'll take a look at are our different strands and how we label them. Notice that we have our five prime end of our DNA strand here and our three prime, three prime end on the other side. And then of course, DNA being anti-parallel, our three prime has to be on this side and our five prime has to be on this side. Therefore, we know that this area right here will be three prime relative to this five prime and this area will be 5' prime relative to this 3'. Prime right here. And one thing to know about DNA replication that's very unique is that we can only go in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction with our DNA polymerases. Therefore, we have a problem in that while we can continuously synthesize DNA this way, it becomes a bit more of an issue when we need to synthesize this way but our helicase is moving that way. Therefore, we'll see different fragments of DNA, short little fragments that we call specifically Okazaki fragments, named after one of the scientists who identified these short little fragments here. The strand that has a continuous new piece of DNA here will be called our leading strand. So we'll identify this stand, strand as our leading strand. 
and we'll identify this strand as our lagging strand. And we can do the same for the bottom, but we have to be careful here. So let's label each of our sides here. And note that we can continuously synthesize five prime to three prime, so five prime to three prime here, but not over here. So we actually flip it. So whenever you get a problem like this, it's probably a good idea to just take your time, draw it out, and write out the five prime to three prime on every fragment that you're drawing here. And the reason that the green is gonna be flipped relative to the blue is because DNA is anti-parallel, which is the same reason why we have five prime and three prime and three prime and five prime here. So all the green is gonna be our new DNA and the shorter fragments on our lagging strand will be our Okazagi fragments. All right, that being said, let's go over another enzyme and this will be primase. Primase is an enzyme that lays down an RNA primer that's going to be located on each of these fragments, whether it's an Okazagi fragment or the very long continuous fragment, so that a later enzyme that will go over DNA polymerase will be able to actually start polymerizing. You can think of it as the base upon which we're building a house, if that helps. So primase there, specifically. All right, so next enzyme, then, we briefly mentioned, is going to be DNA polymerase 3. It is going to polymerize, basically, in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, which we've shown here, and extend from that RNA primer our DNA that we've shown in green. And it will do that for both the lagging and the leading strand here. Next, we'll take a look at DNA polymerase 1. This actually will do two things. It will get rid of our RNA primer. and then fills in space with DNA. Because we don't want RNA mixed in with our DNA, of course, after we fully synthesize our new DNA. Finally, we're going to have little nicks, basically, in between our Okazagi fragments and possibly in between our RNA and DNA. And the protein that's going to help seal those nicks and create full complete phosphodiester bonds is going to be called DNA ligase. So it's going to ligate or seal oops, DNA ligase, which is going to ligate or seal those nicks together to create one continuous DNA strand here. To test yourself, go ahead and take a look at this double AMC derived practice problem. Assuming you've had a chance to take a look at it and pause the video, let's go through it. The correct answer that we are going to be looking at here will be C. And this is what we were taking a look at with our single-stranded binding proteins up here. So in orange, we see the single-stranded binding proteins are what are helping this blue strand and this blue strand from reannealing right after our helicase opens up that DNA. Okay. So C will be our correct answer. DNA polymerase 3 is not what ligates Okazaki fragments together. We should know that as, of course, being DNA ligase's job. Helicase, in the same vein, is not going to be what reanneals DNA after DNA replication. It actually does the opposite. Helicase will split the DNA that we're about to copy. And finally, topoisomerase will do a much different job than interconverting DNA between B and Z isomers. Um, 
And so isomers really isn't you know, the proper name for B and Z DNA, which are two different shapes of DNA, B being the more common form. Topor isomerase, on the other hand, will relieve tension in DNA upstream of helicase due to supercoiling. That's it for today's MedCap video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.